And one last quick point, I actually forgot number five. So I said, how many days do I have in the training block? But also an addendum is And away we go, everyone. Last crazy, last long run of the training block, going 20 miles. And yes, volume is going to be the key word and the question of the day. And we're going to dive into this topic in the studio. And I'm not going to film the long run today. Just going to focus on the task at hand and enjoy the ride and, uh, and then start to really taper this upcoming week. And so volume is key word, question of the day. Um, what is the number one factor, maybe two, uh, factors that go into your decision making when trying to figure out uh, how much volume to run in a given week? Um, and if you want to dive even deeper into what's, what uh, portion or section of your training block, that's good too. Uh, but that's what we're diving. This is a huge topic and I'm probably probably going to make a new playlist after Pikes Peak uh, when I have a little more time actually leading up to the Amsterdam Marathon where we dive into the topic of volume because a lot of people ask me on Instagram especially Twitter a little bit about how many miles they should be running kilometers they should be running so today is just a conversation starter around that topic of volume and I love it it's a great topic but it's a big topic and uh, there's a lot of factors that go into it so we're going to figure that out and we're going to go out in the Zoom Fly 3s. Haven't worn these in probably two weeks, maybe 10 days. So I'm excited to take these out for a long run. I, I don't think I've actually done a long run in them, in them yet. So, all right, let's rock and roll. I hope you had a great weekend. And, oh, man, it's getting close. It's getting close, guys. There we go, back from the long run in the Nike Zoom Fly 3s. Oh, it just feels great mentally to know like that's the long, that's the last long run of this training block and knowing that I can now really start to freshen up in the next 13 days, 12 to 13 days when you're watching this. And the Zoom Fly 3s, I believe they have 44, 45 miles uh, in them, which means the full review after 50 miles is right on the horizon. We'll see if I get it in before the Pikes Peak Ascent. I'll just, uh, well, you'll know here right on YouTube. Okay, today's run 20 miles or 32 kilometers, 740 per mile or 445 per kilometer. Just a cruiser, you know, I felt good. Uh, nice and easy, like my legs are not fresh by any means yet, but just cruising along, getting the miles in, all right? So that was today's run. And let's dive into today's topic, all about volume, trying to figure out how many miles, oh my goodness, this is a huge topic, as I already mentioned, and I get a lot of messages on Instagram, people asking how many miles, kilometers, or minutes, yes, some people go by minutes, and I think that's great, like you gotta do what works for you, uh, mentally especially. So miles, kilometers, or minutes, uh, how many miles or mi kilometers or minutes should they be running on a weekly basis? a monthly basis or an annual basis. That's right. Sometimes folks just measure, they say, okay, I want to run 2000 miles this year. And depending on, okay, we're going to get, we're going to front load it in the first four months. And then I'm going to take it a little easier the last eight months because of life or what have you. Most people track by weekly, just so you know, uh, that's what I do. But I must say, as I continue to age a little bit, I'm realizing the beauty of tracking also by month. Meaning you're not as uh, res you're not as I'll just say it you're not as rigid in hitting your weekly mileage. Okay, first let's define volume. The very simple definition is how many miles, kilometers, or yes, even minutes are you running in a given period of time? And that period of time can frankly be whatever you choose. Uh, most people do weekly because we live on a calendar schedule uh, in the modern world. Uh, so Monday to Sunday or Sunday to Saturday, I guess it would be. Is that right? So I do Monday to Sunday uh, basically because that's what I was taught in high school and college. But some people track by month and some people just simply track annually. And I, it's frankly, I would go with whatever gives you the most mental peace, meaning you're not stressed about hitting your monthly mileage or your annual mileage or your weekly mileage. You got to go with what uh, works for your mental capacity for me. And also, okay, I'll just throw it out there and your personality for me. 
I do, I lean toward weekly because I love staying organized in my life and it helps to integrate the training into that weekly calendar schedule, but I get it. You might live a life that's uh, really busy and you say, okay, I wanna hit 150 miles this month because this week is absolutely insane. I've got two projects for work. My kids got a, a choir practice and a soccer practice and I just gotta, I'm only gonna run like 15 miles this week, so I'm gonna catch up in the later weeks of the month. All right, now let's dive into the 10 points, the 10 factors. I hope you have your notes ready or just go back and rewatch this, especially for all the beginners out there that are just getting into running. I think this list, actually maybe not, even the veterans, like I think it'll, and it, some of them are very obvious, but I think a few of them might not be as obvious and it will at least plant a seed in your mind like, oh yeah, Hmm, maybe for my next training block for uh, a fall marathon that's coming up or even maybe the spring marathon, I will consider this factor for deciding how many miles, kilometers, or minutes I will be running in a given week. And these top 10, I am actually gonna read most of them off of my phone because there's so many and I haven't memorized all of them. Uh, but this is this, these are the 10 steps basically that I ask myself uh, how many miles should I should I be running this week? Okay. And also these are in no particular order. Okay, here we go. Number one, how, I ask myself these questions. How do I want to perform on race day? Okay, that's, that's actually a pr very important question to ask myself when I'm building and I'm actually about to start doing this for the Amsterdam Marathon uh, as I build up to that. So the question, how do I want to perform on race day? State championships, uh, the local 5K race, uh, maybe it's your first 10K of your life, uh, maybe it's your first marathon, whatever, the, maybe you're training for your first 100 mile race, okay? So that's number one. Number two, what is my experience level? Have I been running for six months? And it's amazing. I, want, I wish I could give a hug to all of the new runners out there, like, Welcome to the running family. And I, I just, I've been running for 20 years, but I just, I just, rem I, I re distinctly remember those first 18 months, two years when I really discovered running with my dad up in Buena Vista. And it was just so exciting. I was good at it. So that was also nice being a middle schooler to find a sport that I was good at. But like, I don't know. I just like relish. So anyway, okay, I'm going on a tangent. What is my experience level? Am I six months, 10 years? 20 years, that really impacts uh, weekly volume of training. Okay, number three, how old am I? Uh, there's a big difference between 15 year olds training and 32 year olds training when as a 32 year old, there's a good chance you are nearing your peak uh, cardiac efficiency, okay? It's been tested by science, like right around that I'll just, okay, I'll say that 30 to 35 window is really the prime time, especially for marathon racing, okay? So that's a big, uh, big factor. Number three, how old am I? Number four, what race distance am I preparing for? Kind of what I already mentioned, but am I getting ready for an 800 meter race on the track or a hundred mile race in the San Juans of Colorado, the San Juan Mountains of Colorado? So big difference impacts your volume a ton. Number five, how many days do I have in the training block leading up to the race? For example, leading up to Pikes Peak, I'm in a condensed training block of, I'm just gonna call it eight weeks. I, it's actually, it actually is going to end up being a little under eight weeks because of the phantom pain. So how many days do you have to work with? And that also connects back to number one, how do I want to perform on race day, which also connects to what I keep telling you all, about I'm taking a little bit of a risk in this training block in order to reach my goal of number one, how do I want to perform on race day? So, okay, so number five, how many days do I have in the training block? Number six, what is the terrain of the course? Am I getting ready for a grass cross country course, a, a, an 800 on the track, uh, a, once again, a hundred mile race with, you know, 25,000 feet of vertical climbing. So uh, the type of course that you're racing, yes, or, or maybe it's a road marathon. It will impact how many miles, kilometers, or minutes you're racing. So that's number six. What is the terrain of the race course? Number seven, what is your injury history? Ah, uh, this should probably be a little higher on the list for me, but oh man, because of my injuries, with my bone injuries, I have to be very careful of how many miles I'm running, okay? So this is an important one. Number seven, what is your injury history? Number eight, uh, what 
this is an interesting one, and I don't hear many people talking about this, but if I live, so there's a couple people in the Demore Global Running Group on Strava. If you're not a part of it, you should join. It's a fun group. We get to see where everyone's training around the world, but there's probably a half a dozen people in the group that live in Manhattan. And I know they live in Manhattan because every single run they do is on the island of Manhattan. And the access to dirt might not be readily available. So I actually, if I lived in, on the island of Manhattan or maybe in Tokyo or maybe another big city around the world, I would drop my volume. I would probably have to drop my volume in order to stay healthy by 10 or 15% because of the surface availability for me to run on. Uh, now I know there's probably grass, baseball fields, soccer fields in Manhattan, but anyway, that's a factor to, factor to consider. Uh, and that is number eight. Did I say that? Yeah, number eight. What surface availability do you, ha what access do you have to different types of surfaces like grass? Like the other day I was running around grass just to get on a very soft surface. Okay, that was number eight. Number nine, two to go. Um, this is a little crazy um, and might be a challenge and I don't want to be, uh, anyway, it's just, but it's a reality, okay? All right, I'll just do it. I'll do it. All right, all right. Remember, two, I'm just going to call it two years ago, my family and I were trying to, you know, pay off some debt and I was buying shoes off of Craigslist. This Hoka Clayton, uh, yes, Hoka Clayton was off of Craigslist for $20 and I wore this shoe for, it was a lot. I'm going to say five to 700 miles, somewhere in there. I'm not exactly sure. I wore it a lot and so number nine is what kind of access do you have to shoes with a good midsole? And I know that, but that's some, I'm just telling you, you gotta be, you need to monitor. And I, it all, you know, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm kind of bringing up a tough subject, but it, it, it impa it's impacted by money, unfortunately. And that's why, you know, we try to do the running shoe giveaways here. But if you're running in shoes that are beat to a pulp and you're trying to pull off some high mileage, you have to be careful. You, I, there's just no other way, to, especially if you're running on pavement or concrete a lot. It's just asking for an injury. So again, number nine, what kind of access do you have to new shoes with fresh midsoles? It does make a difference. And I've learned the hard way a couple times. So I don't want that, that to be the case for you guys out there. Okay, that was number nine. Number 10, okay, this last one. And it's actually kind of two points combined into one, but I think they're really connected. Uh, basically, how much can you sleep and what and how and how healthy are you willing to eat all right so how much can you sleep and how healthy are you willing to eat and again like food is expensive and you know vegetables and it adds up like if food adds up so but it does again it impacts our bodies and if we're putting our bodies through higher volumes of training um oh my goodness like the importance of sleep and I need to do better, just so you know, uh, it's so critical. And with the sleep, with the eating, of course, that is impacted by your job, your family, your budget, uh, how much you know healthy food can you buy. But the sleep thing, maybe you're an entrepreneur and you're starting a brand new business. I bet you're working 12 to 18 hours a day. I know what that's like, okay? So that will cut into your sleep time, which might mean you might need to reduce the volume of your training as you're getting your business going, all right? All these things are connected in life. And one last quick point, I actually forgot number five. So I said, how many days do I have in the training block? But also an addendum is at what stage am I at in the training block? So early in the block is little, in the, in the middle and middle to late of a training block, it, it gets pretty high. And then right now, as I start to taper, the volume comes down. So that was a little addendum that I missed for number five. And there you have it. Those are my 10 factors that I look at when deciding and figuring out my weekly training volume. And I already gave you the keyword of volume. And I, yes, I did ask the question of the day already, but you might not need to re-listen to this now, but maybe down the road, like if your next, if your current training block is almost done and you're going to take a break and then start up another one, maybe before your next one starts, you, if, if you want, you can come back and revisit this vlog just to uh, reference and have a little refresher for, okay, I'm, uh, I'm starting, I'm starting my, my grad school. Maybe I need to back off my volume a little bit because I know I'm not going to be sleeping as much or whatever the case may be. And yes, thank you for being here. Thanks for watching this vlog. Uh, we are in for 
for a good week. Like it's taper week, baby. It's like we're really starting to come down and freshen up. So it's exciting. And if you want to dive more into how to run faster, click on the playlist on the left. You see it on the left there in that box. Or if you want to talk about or learn, learn more about my thoughts on the long run, which is what I did today, click on the box on the right. All right. Love you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Seek beauty. Work hard and love each other. See you tomorrow.